Coming up, the Student Leadership Council election results are in. We'll introduce you to the new voices of the student body here at COD. We learn all about the SSC building renovation plans. And are you ready for spring break? We have spring break forecasts that will keep you rested and relaxing all week long. All that and much more on this edition of Courier News TV. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Curtis Oates. Last week, the students at COD cast their votes for Student Leadership Council elections. The votes have been counted and our Student Leadership Council members have been elected. Carlos Munez, Aisha Shudafin, Angel Hernandez, Zohar Saeed Kadari, Raju Ra, and Asma Yadi have all won seats on the Student Leadership Council. In their new roles, they will respectively be the mouthpieces for students here at the college. Raju Ra will take over for Aisha Sudafendan as student trustee to represent the student body in the board of trustee meetings every week. The voter turnout for this year's Student Leadership Council elections is the highest it's been since COVID with 338 votes. Faculty members' ability to connect with students and get a sense of how they're doing earlier on in the semester so that you can sort of troubleshoot the issue before the students drop out or fail the class. And so there's lots of issues that sort of come up in these board meetings, and it's really important that students have a seat at the table mm -hmm. because then we can actually advocate um, for, for their needs. The SLC encourages all students to be more involved in the decisions made here at the College of DuPage. If you have any ideas or suggestions, you can contact any of your new representatives at the SLC office in the Student Service Center, room 2214. Help the Fuel Pantry support students this March. The Fuel Pantry needs your help and will be doing theme drives each month. The goal for this month is to collect 200 toiletry items. For the month of March, there will be donation drives for shampoos, conditioners, soap, and feminine hygiene products. For a momentary donation, visit foundation.cod.edu backslash donate and select Fuel Pantry under designation. Items can be dropped off at the Office of Student Life in room SSC 1217, the fuel pantry in room SC-1000, and at the cafeteria door entrance in the SRC. Is your closet in need of some spring cleaning? Come down to the spring swap by April 11 to drop off your clothes and pick up something new. For everything you donate, you will be given a voucher. Depending on the items you donate with your voucher, you will be able to swap depending on how many tickets you have in total. So it helps students in a lot of ways. Uh, first of all, it brings awareness to how many clothes that they actually have and wear in their um, closet, how much they consume, um, which is one of the things we're trying to teach um, young people about how to approach fashion correctly, especially in the fashion studies department. Um, that we don't have to always get more things, sometimes we can give more. So the idea is just to go into your closet and um, swap out something that somebody else can use. Located in the fashion department in SRC 1007, the clothes swap will take place from 1 to 3 p.m. on Tuesday, April 18th. Student filmmakers in the MPTV Advanced Film Production course are producing two short films this spring. Joining me now to discuss more about these upcoming films are the directors of the two productions, Elvarado Garcia and Zoya Schumach. Well, Zoya, what is your film about? Uh, the film our uh, team works on calls the right key, and it's a narrative drama that tells the story of a family that moves into a new house after they went through divorce. It's mother Amelia and uh, her daughter Julie. And moving into a new house, they're sad, they carry heavy feelings, and mother asks daughter to uh, find out what all the keys are for in the new house, to run around the rooms and see what's in there. And while uh, Julie is um, doing this, she figures that besides the physical keys she carries with her, she has one more key, non-physical, that she can use, and it's her love to her mother, mm -hmm. and it opens her mother's heart. Wow. Everardo, what is your film about? 
So my film's about, uh, my film's breaking. Uh, it follows a husband, paranoid husband named Matthew, and he stays in his home almost 24 seven uh, due to someone breaking in. And he won't tell anyone who will break in, not even his wife, Gina. However, one night, uh, someone actually breaks in an intruder, um, and the intruder demands files from a company named for Second and Prices. Um, and, but before he leaves, he reveals his, his, his identity to himself, of uh, to to the Matthew and reveals to him that he's the original Matthew, living the other Matthew, uh, questioning his entire life. Wow. So tell me, what does this film mean to you personally? Well, I mean, for personally, um, it's more about identity. So the f uh, film seems about identity, and it's very personal to me because there's. Um, it's between these two people, uh, two different personalities, one from the old and one from the new. And these personalities uh, collide to each other and they question like what's uh, happening to their lives. Not only that, who gets to decide which personality gets to live on or not. Same thing to you, Zoya. What does this mean to you personally? Making this film for me is um, being able to broadcast my beliefs and ideas into the world and share with them with others. And um, I believe that showing them sometimes is much more powerful than telling them out loud. So Zoya, what challenges did you face during the production? Oh, that's a question. Honestly, um, I'm very happy about how our production is going. Uh, we're all um, seeing the whole film uh, same way and we're all trying to, um, um, we're all believing that it tells the same thing, that uh, in the world of uh, hard um, situations, there is always a tiny little key that can help us open the door and move on. Um, uh, challenges. We're all friends, and working with friends is always fun and nice, but sometimes it requires us to remind ourselves about the discipline. And um, I wouldn't say that it's like the hardest challenge, but it's definitely something that we're keeping in mind. Okay, uh, er Eduardo, mm -hmm. what challenges did you face? Like maybe funding or anything? What challenges did you face? Well, in the first few weeks, um, our group, um, you know, we started, you know, it was, then we didn't click that well, but until like, you know, about like a few more weeks later, we started to like, you know, communicate way better. And you know, um, there's some things we kind of kind of behind, but um, we started to grow as a as a um, as a family. And so, and even though it's a crew, we're starting to grow as a family. And together, we try to build like what's our vision to this film. And right now, so far, we're we're going. Um, it's going well. So this question is actually for the both of you, and I want both of you guys to answer it. What advice would you give future filmmakers? Zoya, you first. That's a good one. I think um, sometimes in the process of making a film, you may forget that um, what you're doing exactly by being taken with stress, saying about different things like, oh, we need to find that, we need to take care of this, we need to manage this and that, and something goes wrong or everything goes right, but not the way we expect it. Um, the advice I'd give considering all of this is don't forget what exactly you're doing. You're making a film. And you could be doing anything else. And this anything else could be boring and, and sad. But no, you're creating art. You're telling world whatever you believe in and whatever you wish them to see. And just, yeah, um, leave with this reminder. Everardo? Well, my advice to filmmakers is to uh, bring those stories to come to life. You know, we need more original stories, and very importantly, like these, um, these have stories need to be shown on screen. Um, and my biggest advice to filmmakers is try not to stress yourself a lot. Um, try to you know take it slow, take it slow, but also making sure like grab the um, the people that you want um, to bring in this project, and you know make the best quality as possible because you may never know this could be your last film. Uh, so make it as strong as possible and show that you are proud as a filmmaker. Thank you, Everardo and Zoya, and we wish you and your teams the best on your production. If you'd like to support their film projects, please visit seedandspark.com and search the right key and break in. When we return from break, we'll tell you if the overcast skies are going to be sticking around for spring break.
Do you have a $1,000 business idea? Pitch your innovative product or service to a panel of expert judges as part of the College of DePage Big Idea Pitch Contest. Judges will be looking for inventive concepts that correspond to the real needs of today's growing markets. Applications are due March 31st. For more information, visit the Big Idea Pitch Contest. College of DePage College Theater presents Tim Kelly's The Uninvited, April 6th to April 16th. Performances are at 8 p.m. Thursdays through Saturdays and 3 p.m. Sundays in the Studio Theater of COD's Mackinich Arts Center. Theater Department Chair Amelia Barrett directs. Tickets are $14 for students and seniors and $16 for adults. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit atthemac.org or call the Mac box office at 630-942-4000. Box office hours are noon to 6 p.m. Tuesday to Saturday and three hours prior to performances. New Philharmonic, the professional orchestra in residence at the Mackinac Arts Center at College of DePage, closes out its 2022 to 2023 season with Broadway in concert, South Pacific, at 7.30 p.m. Saturday, April 15th, and 3 p.m. Sunday, April 16th. Performances are in the Max Belushi Performance Hall. Tickets are $67. $10 tickets are available for students based on availability. For more information, visit atthemac.org or call the Mac box office at 630-942-4000. The box office is open Tuesday through Saturday and three hours prior to performances. Naperville makes the list. A Brookfield Zoo exhibit is expanding and what's popular for Easter baskets this year, this is your Community Roundup. Naperville has made the list of America's best cities for another year in a row. The suburban community ranks fourth on the 2023 Best Cities to Live In in America's list, which was released Monday by Niche, a popular ranking and review website. The city of 149,000 residents is no stranger to Alculates, having made multiple other lists, including cities with the best public schools in the nation and best cities to raise a family in in America. Brookfield Zoo is undertaking a massive project that includes expanding its habitats for primates and building a conservation center with a learning space for visitors. The current tropical world habitat, which houses its monkeys and apes, will be expanded to include four new outdoor areas. The project will likely take two years, with the entire complex set to be completed in 2025. Visitors will be able to see the animals in their new habitat beginning that year and potentially extending into 2026 as the animals acclimate and are introduced into their new spaces. Easter is just around the corner and people are already buying lots of Easter candy. Here are the three most popular Easter candies in Illinois. According to the National Retail Federation data, jelly beans were ranked first in the list with Kinder Eggs being second and Hershey Fun Size Candy Bars third. Over the past three years, America has spent around three billion on candy during the Easter season. So don't forget to fill up your Easter basket before the candies are gone. We lace up our shoes and head over to DuPage County Fairgrounds for the annual Sneaker Stop Convention. CNTV reporter Manuel Nardi tries it on for size. We're here at the DuPage County Fairgrounds for the annual Sneaker Stop Convention. This is an event where resellers and shoppers from around the globe can come to buy, sell, or to trade their sneakers. People from all around the globe flock to Wheaton just for this event. From Adidas to Nike, there were shoes for all walks of life. Truly, sneakers have been around since 1985, since the first Jordan release. I think that people just really enjoy shoes, fashion, vintage, all as a whole. Our events bring all these people together. People get to make money. People get to find their grails that they've been looking for. Coming to these events are not only for buying and reselling shoes, but for also bringing together people in the community as a whole. I came here when it was our first event last year. Um, and like I was saying, this is, it's been a lot of growth this event he's done the hot tops done a lot of growth and you know his brand and stuff like that so I wanted to come out and support him community is a huge part you know seeing a whole bunch of people that I know um, seeing them week by week or every other weekend once a month whatever case may be um, and then plain and simple just grabbing shoes grabbing shoes right here 
picked these up today and I got rid of them today. So, you know, got to make some money too. Selling shoes has become a profitable business. But for people that just love the game, there's much more to it than just money and selling shoes. To be honest, I guess it's what kind of culture you want to be in. If you want to wear a shoe that somebody else would be impressed by, by all means, get in the culture. But if you want to wear a shoe that you actually like, just go to your store, find a shoe you like, buy it. That's the culture to me. The Sneaker Style Convention will be hosting another event in this coming April. And for more information, please visit Instagram at Sneaker Style Convention. From CNTV News, I'm Manuel Nardi. The College of DuPage men's basketball team finishes the 2022-23 season with a sixth place finish in the NJCAA Division III Championship Tournament. The Chaps lost in the fifth place game against North Essex Community College 89-66. Sophomore Matt Elliott led the Chaps with 17 points with fellow sophomore Drew Gaston adding 10 points of his own. The team's overall record this year was 22-15. and 15. The sixth place finish at the National is the Chaparral's best since placing third in the 2007 tournament. And here's a look at your Chaparral spring break forecast. There's a 50% chance of snow today. Highs will be in the low 40s on Tuesdays, and you can expect mostly cloudy skies during the day and a high of 45. And your Wednesday and Thursday continues with mostly cloudy skies and a high in the mid 40s. Looking ahead to Friday, there's a chance of rain and highs in the upper 50s. And remember, all of your latest weather updates, check out the College Next Generation Web Lab at weather.cod.edu. Now it's time for a new segment we call Chap Chat. We ask students what their plans are for spring break this year. Now, spring break is coming up, okay? So with that being said, what are your plans for this coming spring break? Well, this Sunday, actually, I'll be going to New York City, Times Square, hotel, you know. Gonna, first time in New York, you know, so we're going to see what that's about. Well, I'm going to get ready for the first track meet up in St. Ambrose. You know, just trying to get on my grind, focus on some of my grades, because I know them is lacking. Uh, I'm going to be training with this uh, trainer called Oliver Davis. He's one of the best DB trainers in the world mm -hmm. type situation. He's down there in Atlanta, Georgia, so I plan on getting with him for like three days, and then I'm coming back up here to train with my DB trainer out there in Milwaukee. Uh, my plans, I'm just going to be chilling at home, maybe uh, go to work a couple days and studying for uh, my midterms. Well, I mean, I got to work a lot, you know, I got to make the money. Uh, I'm also going to probably go out to other colleges, see my friends, you know. Uh, other than that, you know, pretty relaxed. I hope to work full time as well as hang out with my friends. Um, I got to I got to study a lot. I have a ethics midterm to take and then I'm just going to work a lot. And if you can't go on a vacation for spring break, remember there will be no classes starting Monday, March 27th through Sunday, April 2nd. Hopefully you will be able to find some rest and relaxation during your time off from school. And remember to join us Tuesday, April 4th at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. for our special election coverage. We will have analysis, candidate reactions, local, state, and national coverage. CNTV election coverage 2023 will be available at codcourier.org and our YouTube and Facebook pages at Courier TV. For everyone here at Courier News TV, I'm Curtis Oates. Have a great spring break.